Good morning and welcome to worship online with St. Mary of the Angels. It is a little odd to say welcome to worship since we're online, you're not actually here in the building, but I do believe that even when we worship in separate places, when we do it at the same time, uh, or even at separate times, but when we come together in prayer and in intention and in thought, uh, that we are in fact worshiping together. So with that, good morning and welcome to worship with St. Mary of the Angels. I am Father Kevin, I am the rector at St. Mary's, and I am thrilled to have you here with us today. Uh, something pretty cool happened on July 3rd this year. Uh, and to know why it's so cool, you gotta know a little bit about me. And something about me is uh, I am a music fan. I very much love music. I am a musician. I'm not the best singer or the best guitarist. I do play a lot of instruments, none of them particularly well, but I do, I do love music uh, so very much. I also very much love theater uh, and, and a movie buff. So any form of like entertainment through telling a story, I'm a big fan of that. Also, I am a history buff. I absolutely love uh, learning about and studying history. I like getting into the nitty gritty of it, learning the good, the bad, all of it, and figuring out how we got to where we are through that history uh, is fascinating. Uh, I'm also would consider myself to be a patriot. I, I love our country. I love the United States of America. I don't think we always do everything as well as we could. I don't think our past is as clean and shiny as I wish it were. I do think there are times in our past uh, that we did not do as a country what we could and should do, and it's pretty easy to point those times out. I don't think that means we're a bad or horrible country. I think that means our country, much like the people in it, has both good and bad in their lives. We have things that we are proud of, and we have things that we are ashamed ashamed of. So all that said, on July 3rd, the musical, a musical telling a story about history and American patriots was out and available to be live streamed on TV. Uh, that musical is called Hamilton. And I don't know how many of y'all watched it or saw it. I never got the chance to see it or haven't so far had the chance to see it in the theater. So I was so excited when I saw that it was coming uh, to be able to be live streamed online. And I must confess, as busy as I am, I've actually watched it four times since it came out. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. I love the music. I love the acting. I love everything about it. I thought there was so much depth and so many little details. It, it was fantastic. Uh, and the songs have been stuck in my head every single day since. I'm not kidding. I sing them all the time in my head and sometimes out loud. Uh, all that to be said, I, I loved it and I'm okay with the fact that it's not entirely historically accurate. There are parts of it that aren't accurate to what history really was or what really happened and that's okay. I still like the movie. I still like the, the movie The Patriot which wasn't historically accurate in every way. I still like uh, the older patriotic musical 1776 which was great but again not entirely accurate to, to true history. I like the movie Braveheart which wasn't accurate to true history. Uh, so I'm okay with the fact that Hamilton takes some liberties for the sake of the story for the musical. Uh, I also think it's really interesting uh, the fact that it's told through significantly hip-hop music and it's told significantly uh, through actors who are people of color. Now one of the interesting things of that is that the, the different actors, some of them played some of our founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson, uh, James Madison, and particularly one plays George Washington, uh, an actor named Christopher Jackson, who is a black man, plays George Washington, and he had some struggles playing that because he looked at George Washington and he, being a history fan like me, he absolutely saw amazing, admirable things about George Washington. But he also saw that Washington was a slave owner, that he had over a hundred slaves and his wife had a few hundred more. Now Washington did set his slaves, slaves free, but in his will. In fact, in his will, he stated not just when he dies, but after he dies and his wife, Martha, after she dies, then the slaves uh, that he owned would be emancipated, would be set free. So Washington clearly had some understanding of the sin of slavery 
and how it was uh, a, a toxin in the United States at that time how it continues to be a toxin, that history in the United States today, that we're still wrestling with that. So Christopher Jackson, the actor, being a black man, also a lover of history who admires so much about George Washington, really struggled thinking, how am I going to play George Washington, who owned slaves, uh, who sanctioned the beating of his slaves if they misbehaved? Uh, how am I going to play this character? And, and he learned about George Washington and he learned about him releasing the slaves and he kind of had this thought uh, and talking with some of the other creators of Hamilton he, he talked and this and had this idea that maybe Washington was aware of the sin of slavery and maybe he wasn't truly okay with that and he struggled with that sin and maybe he struggled to the point where if he were alive now he would look back and wish he had done more now, the musical has so many cool little spots in it and little details that you might miss. And one of them is this. At the end of the story, and I don't want to give too much away, but at the end of it, uh, one of the characters, Eliza Hamilton, uh, Alexander Hamilton's wife, is singing a song after Alexander has been killed by Aaron Burr uh, in the duel. After that, she's singing a song about telling his story, about how his story will continue on uh, through her telling it. And in doing such, she's also telling the story of all the soldiers that he fought with, of other people, and one of the people that was in his life she's telling the story of is George Washington. And she sings in the final song how she helped raise money to build the Washington Monument. And how when she does that then, Christopher Jackson, the actor playing George Washington, steps into the spotlight behind her and sings, she tells my story. Because that's such an important thing to him, to have his story remembered and told. And then as soon as she gets done singing about the Washington Monument, she then sings about her work that she tried to continue for Alexander Hamilton as being an abolitionist, as being someone who wanted to end and fight against slavery. So she goes from talking about the Washington Monument, George Washington steps up and sings, she tells my story, and then she immediately starts talking about slavery and her fight and work to end slavery. And as she does that, a really cool little gem in the musical is that the actor for Christopher Jackson behind her, playing George Washington, looks over at her, has a look on his face of almost solid guilt, shakes his head, and then nods and bows at her and steps out of the spotlight as she's singing about the work she did to help fight slavery. And it was such a cool moment. And it was so neat to see Christopher Jackson being able to figure out a way to portray this, care, this man that he in so many ways admires, but on the same hand or on the other hand, in so many ways, uh, was sinful. There's a truth there. There's a truth that in our past there is both good and there is also bad. And not just in our past as a country, as people in general, as a population, as humanity, we look in our past and we find good and we find bad. Also as individuals, we look in our past and we find good and we find bad. There's tons of good in my past and there's tons of bad too. And just like Chris Jackson playing George Washington, there are times where I think about the bad in my life and I wish I could have done more. I, I want to just shake my head and bow and step out of the spotlight and say, man, I wish I could have done more. But then I also wish, like him in that moment, he has the ability to bow and thank, in a way, Eliza for continuing his good work. And I get to recognize that part of my story, part of what I do, is even amongst my bad, even with that, the good work that I do can continue on in the good work of others. It really is an amazing thought to think about that and how we need to embrace both our good and our bad. We can't put it under a rug. We can't stick our heads, our heads in the sand. We have to see it. We have to embrace it. That's the only way to move past it, to learn from it, to do better and to move on. That's going to be a bit of our theme today as we read a little bit of scripture, as we sing a couple songs. I'll apologize once again today, I'll be the one singing the songs. I'm sorry, 
you forgive me for it. That's going to be cool. Uh, we'll do some songs. We're going to do uh, a little bit of talking about the scripture. And we're going to be talking about our legacy, our story, the good and the bad, and how there is something better, someone better, who can take our bad and make good work from it. And how instead of focusing on our story, we should focus on His. So we'll open with a prayer. And this is our collect of the day, which means it's a prayer that collects the themes of the day and puts it into one prayer to God. So with that, we're going to start with me pronouncing a blessing on you, which is the Lord be with you. And I hope you want him with me. So you say, and also with you, and I'll say, let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have, have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning. And now we are going to sing a song. Please sing along with me and know the louder you sing, the less you can hear my voice singing as well. Let's sing. differently today and you probably might not even notice a difference but I will and what I notice is this I'm usually what we call a lectionary preacher uh, what that means is the church the Episcopal Church and a lot of other denominations too uh, use a tool called the lectionary that organizes readings from scriptures 
to match every Sunday of the year so that on any given Sunday we know what readings we're going to use. And there's a, usually it's an Old Testament reading, a Psalm, a New Testament, and a Gospel. And I typically will preach from one of those readings. Today I'm going to switch it up though. Today I'm going to change and use a reading that's not in the lectionary. Uh, and we will still talk about the lectionary in a little bit. And I have a little bit of a challenge for you. But I think the lectionary today does kind of hit on the theme that we talked about in our collect. But there's another verse in the Bible that I think does a fantastic job also hitting on that theme. And I want to talk about that verse today. And then I'm actually going to challenge you at the end uh, to go to your Bible or online or wherever you have one or even go to lectionarypage.net and you can get the readings there. And the challenge will be to read through those readings and see if you can pick up on the theme that we're talking about today in those readings and how they apply uh, to this reading as well. So the reading we're going to talk about today is from the book of Ecclesiastes. It's an Old Testament book, and you might recognize uh, chapter 3 from Ecclesiastes, at least the first uh, several verses. They say this, For everything there is a season, and a time for everything under heaven a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal. Do you recognize this? A time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Do you get it so far? A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. Uh, there's actually a famous song that sounds like this, to everything turn, turn, turn. You know the song. You're probably singing it in your head now. If you don't know the song, go listen to it. Go look it up. To everything, turn, turn, turn. That's probably not the official name. But that song is taken directly from Ecclesiastes, from chapter 3, the first several verses of it. Uh, but we're actually going to scoot down a little bit to verse 11. So Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. It says this. He has made, when it's talking about he, God, he has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds. When it says there, it's talking about humanity. He has put a sense of past and future into their minds. Yet, they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. Now, as we are talking uh, today about our theme, I was talking about uh, earlier both the good and the bad in our history as, as, a, as a population, as a uh, species, and also as individuals, the good and the bad, and uh, about how people will perceive our lives later on uh, throughout history. What will they think when they listen to us or hear back to us or what we've done? And as I talked earlier about the story uh, or the play Hamilton, um, that's a big theme throughout Hamilton. It's all about legacy. It's all about who will tell my story. When they do, what will they say? Will they know that I have done great things? Will they think I have done bad things? Will, they, uh, will people remember me when I'm gone? And that's actually a very, very common and very human uh, thought and concern. Who will remember me when I'm gone? How will they remember me when I'm gone? Believe it or not, we actually spend a lot of time worried about and thinking about that. Uh, so many of us, we want to achieve great things because we want people to remember us. We want to be famous because we want people to remember us. Uh, some people actually go the opposite route and they want to do something, they do end up doing something horrible, something terrible because they want to be known and they want to be remembered so much so that they are willing to do the worst of things, the greatest of sins, just so they can be famous or be remembered. We tend to have a desire for that. It's like it's in our hearts. In fact, a lot of us, uh, even if you think about children, a lot of people want children because they want somebody to carry on their legacy, their story. And they wonder, will my kids remember me? Will my grandchildren remember me? Will my great-grandchildren remember me? How far down the line will it go? I clearly remember my parents. I'm blessed in that they're still alive and with me. 
I uh, am not blessed to still have my grandparents. All my grandparents have passed, but I very much have memories of them. However, I do wonder, will my children have any memories of my grandparents? Well, they never will get the chance to meet them. So their only memory will be the stories that I tell. And what stories do I tell? Do I tell the good only? Do I paint them only as perfect people? Do I tell the bad only? Do I give them the full picture? Here's the good and here's the bad. And here's what we love about them. How long will they be remembered if I do that? For one generation, maybe two? And yet we struggle, we fight so hard to try to find ways to get our story told, our legacy told. And, and this verse, I think, tells a lot about that. So we're going to break it down a little bit. And we're going to call the first part of the verse, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, A. And we're going to call the second part, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, B. And we're just going to do the shorthand. We're going to call it 11A and 11B. And 11A says this. I'll read it again. He has made everything suitable for the time, for its time. So that's 11a. He's made everything suitable for its time. Uh, I have a couple other Bibles here. I've got a collection of Bibles here today. I have so many. And the reason is they have different language. Uh, well, they're all in English, but they use different words for different translations. So this is the NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version. This is the NLT, uh, the New Living Translation. And it will have a different way of saying that. It says, I have seen, I'm sorry, wrong verse, uh, verse 11. He has made everything beautiful in its time. So we have one way of saying that, another way of saying it. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Uh, and then this is the ESV, the English Standard Version, and it says it a different way, but they're all kind of saying the same thing, just in different words. And that's because some people use different words to express different things, but they all kind of have the same point. And it's that God has made everything beautiful in its time. What that means is that there are boundaries that there is a time and a time has a beginning and an end and all things are beautiful within that beginning and that end. But what happens before that beginning, the thing doesn't exist. And after that beginning, it doesn't exist again. So things are finite. And for God to be able to create things that are finite, you have to know something about him. In order for him to be able to create limits, he has to transcend those limits. He has to be beyond the limits of the beginning and the end, beyond the limits of time. And we refer to God as that, the God who was here in the beginning and will be here in the end. He is the beginning and the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Alpha is the first letter in the alphabet of the Greek alphabet, and Omega is the last letter. So it's an analogy, if you will, of saying God is the beginning and the end. And all these borders along the way of time, all these boundaries, he transcends those. In order for God to be God he, and to create limits on time, he must transcend them. So that's one thing uh, that we take away from that, that God transcends time and within time he has made everything to be beautiful or suitable within its time. What that means is things have a time. They have a specific time uh, where they will accomplish what he wants them to accomplish. Now here uh, is an issue with that. If there is a time for everything, then that time cannot be rushed. Uh, as a human who loves the holiday of Christmas, I, even as a child, especially as a child, couldn't, couldn't wait for Christmas. Couldn't wait. Absolutely was so excited for Christmas to come. And if I had excuse me, if I had my way, I would have made it come so much faster, so much quicker. But if I made it come so much quicker, I would have missed a lot of things. Let's say it's September and I wanted it to be Christmas already. I'd have missed Halloween. I'd have missed Thanksgiving. Most importantly, I'd have missed my birthday. Uh, more importantly, I'd have missed my twin sister's birthday. Um, there's all these things I'd miss if I rushed the timing of things. So in order for there to be times of stuff, uh, for God must transcend those times. And if God has created those times for something beautiful in those times, we cannot rush him. We cannot make that happen faster than it is intended to do. 
Uh, have you ever heard the, the analogy of you cannot force open the petals of a flower? If you were to do so, you actually end up breaking the flower. You have to wait till it blooms on its own. You have to wait for its right time. I can't force crops to grow faster than I want them to. I have to wait for that right time. And it's the same way with everything in our lives. With everything in our lives, there is a time. And we run into a lot of struggles when we try to force that time or we don't enjoy or we can't handle that time. We don't have the patience to wait for that time. For those who try to force it, for those who try to rush it, they actually find themselves frequently frustrated. They find themselves constantly in a challenge of trying to force something they cannot force. However, for those who don't, for those who don't try to force time, what you actually find is you actually find a sense of patience. And with that patience comes peace and actually comes a joy, knowing that while that time's not here, it will come. And to everything, there is a time, a season for it to be beautiful. And if we can wait patiently for it, we will have that beauty. When we wait, we receive the benefits of our patience. Uh, so I like to cook. I, I love food, I love cooking, but there's a challenge I have when I cook and the problem is this, I like to eat the ingredients as I cook it. So as I'm prepping something, I'm constantly nibbling away and, and eating the ingredients of it. And then what ends up happening is by the time I'm done cooking, I am usually full. I usually have eaten so many of the ingredients that this masterpiece that I've created, uh, this wonderful meal, I don't have the room or the enjoyment for eating it. Or because I've eaten all the ingredients, I've got the taste of all of them. And therefore, when it comes time to actually eat the meal, it's no longer this grand, wonderful thing because I've already kind of tainted a little bit of what that meal was going to be. Uh, something else sometimes happens and it's this. I, I grew up with siblings and I was a kid that was growing so I was hungry and I learned to eat fast. Uh, there are times where when, even when I'm not cooking I'll go to a restaurant and I'll get food uh, or I'll get takeout and my wife will sit there with me and we'll eat the food and she'll take her time and enjoy the food and I just scarf it down as fast as I can. And then because of that I don't actually enjoy it as much as I should. And I end up getting to the point where I'm out of food and I find myself staring at my wife's food, hoping that she gets full and maybe I might be able to get some more uh, and take my time and enjoy it this time. You, you can't rush things that have a time. If you do, you miss out on the benefits of them. So that's uh, Ecclesiastes 11a. God made everything beautiful for a time. If we move on to Ecclesiastes 11b, we find that it says this, moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds, into humans' minds, yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I'm gonna read that in the other versions as well for you. In the NLT, it says, he has also set eternity in the heart, in the human heart, Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I'm going to read it again for you, this time in the English Standard Version, the ESV. And in this one it says, uh, From the beginning, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. He has put eternity in our hearts, and yet we cannot find out what God has done from the beginning of the, in the end. What that means is, even though we live within a finite time, within these boundaries, we have a sense of more than that. We understand that something came before us, and we understand that something is coming after us. And we truly have it in our hearts that that is the way things are. We have this feeling that there is eternity, and yet we cannot fully grasp it because we are living in finite boundaries, finite areas of time. And what we strive so hard to do is to extend our amount of time. We wish we have more time, that our story will be told, our legacy will continue, therefore we'll have more time. We'll be able to stretch 
those finite boundaries because we know that there is something beyond the finite, the finity of our time. Now, knowing that, one of two things can happen. We can be like the person trying to rush things. We can be like the person that doesn't have uh, that patience. And when we do that, what we end up actually finding is we find despair. We actually end up finding that there is suffering and pain in the fact that no matter how much we want to transcend our finite time, we can't do it. We cannot live through infinity. Our history, our time, our legacy will end. It might be with children or grandchildren or great-grandchildren. It might be with one edition of a history book and then the next or the next. But whatever it may be, we recognize that we are truly finite and stretching for infinity, which is just simply beyond us. However, remember that God transcends time. God transcends our beginning and our end. He transcends the beginning and the end. The boundaries of time do not apply to God. He has made everything for a season, everything beautiful in its time. So that means that there is someone who knows the knowledge of infinity. There is someone who lives beyond our finite understanding, and that is God. And he has put that uh, understanding of infinity in our hearts. And the reason is because he wants us to know him. He wants us to know his infinity, how he stretches beyond time and how for us to actually stretch our legacy, our story, our finite boundaries is not through our own means because we are finite. We cannot break that, but through his. It's through knowing and following God. It's through telling His story, sharing His legacy, because His story and His legacy transcends time. It goes beyond those boundaries. Now, for some of us, we don't like that. We don't want that to be the case. We want to have the power and the strength for ourselves. So we, in turn, find despair because we're going to be disappointed. We're not going to be able to force something to happen. We want to happen. But for those of us who believe in Christ, those of us who believe in Jesus, those of us who believe in the Holy Spirit, those of us who believe in God the Father, those of us who believe in God and recognize Him as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, something that is transcendent of time, we recognize a peace. We recognize a comfort, a joy. Instead of finding despair in the fact that we don't know everything, we find patience and peace, trusting in the one who does. I don't need to know everything. I don't need to know why this is happening or why that happened or what's going to happen because I trust in God. I trust in him who is beyond time, who has set the universe into seasons, who has set everything for a time. And in order for me to trust him, I must know that he is good. You could believe in God all you want and think that he is doing things for horrible purposes. And I think that's a, a jaded reading of the scripture. I think by doing that, what we're doing is we're trying to understand the infinite within our own limited understanding. But if I truly believe Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11a, that God made everything beautiful in its time. That tells me that God will make good of everything and that every bit of suffering, no matter how sorrowful it is, that through that, God will find good, that God will make good. I could argue that some of the greatest suffering, if not the greatest suffering that has ever taken place in the history of our limited existence is when the infinite God became human, became one of us, became Jesus Christ and suffered a death on a cross after being tortured, a horrible, grueling, physical, painful death. But at the same time, he also felt separation from love. He felt separation as God from his creation, from the people who would hang him on that cross. 
He felt separation from God uh, and the purity of, of who he is and what he is by taking on our sin. Uh, our sin is essentially us being separate from God. Our sin is us putting walls between us and God. Our sin is us taking steps away from God. Anything we do that moves us away from God is sin. And when Jesus takes us, our sin upon himself, he is removing himself from God, from that love, from that infinity. And that is suffering. Because he suffered for me, I have faith that he loves me. And because he loves me and he is infinite, I have faith that in my limited expectations, in my limited time, in my limited understanding, he will make good of it. Even if I don't understand it, I don't have to. I become happy and the fact that I don't know everything. They say ignorance is bliss, and I'm not condoning being ignorant. I think we should strive to learn. I think we should try, strive to learn more. We should strive to understand God. We should strive to understand each other. We should strive to understand pain and suffering. We should strive to understand our past, both the good and the bad. We should strive to understand what our legacy has been and what it will be. We should strive for all this stuff. And that's what the writer of Ecclesiastes does. He's actually striving for wisdom. In the early chapter of Ecclesiastes, in chapter one, oh, I'm in the Bible that says, that's still in Isaiah. I'm sorry. So I'm going to switch over to my E. SV, which I have it marked in, and I'm going to go to Ecclesiastes to chapter 1, and in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, it tells you what the writer is trying to do. Uh, it says in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 3, what does man gain by all the toil at which he toils under the sun? It means that he is trying to learn. He is trying to understand what what we're gaining, what we're doing, what we are. He is trying to gain wisdom. And what he learns is this, that God has made all things for a time beautiful. He makes good of all things. But those things are limited to a time that we cannot control. On top of which, we cannot understand it. But God does understand it. He can control. And he has it set for a time that is beyond our understanding and our expectations. But even within that, it's okay because he loves us and cares for us. And good will come. And he displayed that for us. By dying for us on the cross. By becoming one of us. And experiencing that pain and suffering that we experience so that we can be brought back in relationship for him. So here's your challenge today. I didn't read the readings from the lectionary, and these are the readings, and I'll, I'll put them up so you can see them, but the readings are Isaiah chapter 44, verses six and eight. It's a short reading. Psalm 86, verses 11 through 17. Romans 8, 12, verse 12 through 25. And then the gospel lesson is from Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30 and 36 through 43. Now they do that sometimes, and you can actually just read chapter verses 13 through 43, but a lot of times the scripture will say something and then it'll kind of change the subject a little bit and then go back to it. They're like bookends, and they actually help us understand uh, what's in the middle and what's in the middle helps us understand the bookends. But sometimes for the purpose of the lectionary, we kind of skip the middle because it sounds like one more uh, a more cohesive story to do that. Um, so go and read those lessons. And you can find them in your Bible. Uh, if you have a Bible online on the computer, go online and find your Bible. You can find them on uh, the website lectionarypage.net. Uh, just click on July 19th and you'll see them. And I want you to read those readings. And I want you to think about how finite our lives are. How finite our understanding is. How finite our time is. And how God's is infinite. And how in his infinite time, in his infinite understanding, in the boundaries that he transcends, because he is a creator of all, I want you to look at that and think about your legacy, your story, your time, your understanding. Compare it to his and see how those readings can inform us of what our time is, what it should be, and what his time is, 
and how we should lean towards and on Him. How He is our rock. How He provides times for crops to grow and metaphorically in our lives for crops to grow, for there to be fruit as well. How if we focus on things within our finite time, uh, if we focus on the needs of our flesh, how those things are fleeting, how they disappear, how they dissipate. I get so excited about food, but as soon as I've eaten it, it's gone and I'm no longer maintaining that satisfaction. Any satisfaction we find in our lives uh, that we base on the finite will eventually dissipate. It will fleet because it is finite. The only true satisfaction we can find outside of the finite moment is by looking at the infinite, which is God. So go read those readings. Call me, email me, show up at the door, talk to me in the comments below on Facebook, on YouTube, wherever it is. Comment below, share with me your thoughts on those readings, share them with each other, and let's have a conversation about how little we know and how we can trust in a God who loves us. So let that be our prayer today. And with that, I'm going to go into a prayer and then we're going to sing another song. And uh, this song is going to be, uh, the first one was a hymn. And I picked that hymn because it talks about how God is immortal and invisible and, and wise. And it also talks about how he transcends, transcends time and how we have a moment of being beautiful, but then also will wither and fade. This next song that we're going to do is simply about how God, how the Spirit, how Jesus loves us. But before that, let's pray. The Lord be with you. Father, we have a limited understanding. We have a limited viewpoint. We have a limited perspective. We have limited knowledge. Lord, we are surrounded by the limited. And we try so desperately to transcend that. We try so desperately to stretch beyond the limited through our own works, through our own actions. Lord, we become so preoccupied with our own temporary satisfaction and the longevity of our legacy. We become so preoccupied with who will remember us and how will they remember us. We become so afraid of the fact that we know that we are fleeting. Help us to find true satisfaction in the one thing that is eternal, that is you. Lord, you created us for a loving, eternal relationship with you. You put eternity into our hearts so that we can know you, so that we can be your creation outside of this lifetime that you, through you, we will stay alive, that through you we are not just remembered, but we are intimately known. Help us to know that. Lord, for anybody out there today who is watching this service, this video, help them to know that. If they don't know that, Lord, put it in their hearts. Make them aware of your presence, of your love. Give them the peace and satisfaction that comes with knowing that they are finite and you are not. Help us to try not to rush. Help us to try not to force, but instead to prayerfully consider your time and to wait for your time when beauty will be upon us. Lord, I ask your blessing on our church, on our universal church, on all churches, on your body in this world, on the people who strive to do your will. Help us to do your will. Lord, be with our leaders, be with our governors, with our mayors, with our congress, with our judges, Lord, be with our president. Help them all to find wisdom through you, to do good things, to serve your people. Lord, we ask you to be with all those who have suffered, who are going through pain, who are struggling with the finite, who are struggling with the depression that can come from focusing in on how limited we feel that we are in our own power. Help us to find strength in you for those who have passed on, for those who have died, who have stepped out of this limited time, help them to find eternal relationship with you and help those here who are left behind understand it's okay for us to mourn, it's okay for us to miss our loved ones, but that they live on through you, that you are the way, the truth, and the life, you are the path. Lord, help us to be humble. Help us to recognize that in the vast expanse of the universe, that how great it is that the glory of the expanse of the infinite is your glory. And by contrast, 
the incredible finite life that we have in being that we are how small we are is how small we are in comparison to your glory and yet though you are so big and so great and we are so small that you love us that you reached out and down to us so that we can be in relationship with you we pray this this day and every day more in your holy precious name amen we are going to do this song now so please join with me and again remember the louder you sing the quieter i sound today. Um, 
I want you to know that I'm praying for you. Even if I don't know who you are, I have no idea you're just somebody watching this video, please know you're in my hearts, you're in my prayers. If you actually have any prayer requests at all, please put them in the comments below. Or call the church, uh, the number is 407-855-1930. Leave a message, ask us to pray for you. Send me an email, you can send it to kbartle, B-A-R-T-L-E, that's my name, at stmaryangels.org. Uh, you can go to our website and find us there and you can put an email in there to pray for us. Or to have us pray for you. Pray for us too, but have us pray for you. If you would like to share the gospel, if you would like to share this message, please do. Tell people about this message of Christ. Point them to Ecclesiastes, whatever Bible you have, whichever version of the scripture you have, point them to uh, the infin infinite knowledge that God has and how we can rest in that. You can also share this video. You can share it on Facebook, you can send it on YouTube or whatever it may be. Share this video with others uh, so that they can hear that message of Christ's love and God's love for them. If you want to help support our church and our ministry, uh, there are lots of different ways you can do that. You can do that through service, you can do that through prayer, you can do that through ministry with us. Um, you can also contribute to us. You can help uh, by giving us gifts for our finances. We're still working on repairing our buildings to make them a safe and wonderful place for people to come for sanctuary and time of worship. Uh, we're still reaching out to the community to try to find ways to serve those who are in need and there will be so many more people in need right now and coming up soon. Uh, so if you would like to help contribute financially to the church, you can do that online too. Again, just go to our website. It's stmaryangels.org and, uh, and contribute that way. Know that you are loved. Know that even though it might not seem like it at all times, God will make good. And I pray that you can trust in Him and find the beauty in His time, not ours, this day and every day more. And may the peace which passes understanding abide in your life this day and forever. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always.